Welcome to my unboxing and first look at the AXP100 from Thermalrite. Now you might think of Thermalrite as like beastly coolers that are friggin' huge and perform like awesome and stuff. Like the Silver Arrow Extreme, which we actually took a look at in a review not that long ago, where it actually was pretty darn close to an H100i in terms of the performance that we were able to squeeze out of this bad boy with 220 millimeter fans installed on it. So, you know, immaculate uh, production, manufacturing, that's the word I was looking for. Uh, just, you know, gorgeous designs, very shiny, very cool looking. But, not everyone necessarily has enough room for a cooler like that. So that's where the AXP100 comes in. This is a low profile cooler, but built the way that Thermalrite builds coolers. So the mounting hardware alone weighs about six pounds. And obviously I'm exaggerating a little bit, but Thermalrite does such a good job of mounting hardware. Look at this stuff. I mean, it's built like it's actually designed for the motherboard to be like in a combat zone and the CPU cooler will not come off no matter what. And I'm gonna need a knife to open this up. And there are a billion little pieces, but the good news is Thermalrite also does a pretty good job of documenting where all the little pieces go so that you shouldn't have too much trouble. I mean, here's what I want you to see more than anything else. Like, look at this hold down plate. Like, look at this thing. It's like, look at this. This is like solid metal. Look how thick it is. We'll do an HTC 8X size comparison because everyone knows how big these are. There you go. Hilarious, right? No one knows. Uh, but don't worry about it. It's basically as thick as the, as the glass pieces on either side of an iPhone 4. I just know that from memory. I can't hold one up for you because I don't have it anymore. So there's the back plate. Again, same thing, super thick piece of metal. I'm not gonna dwell on this for too long. Let's move along to the cooler itself. So they include what looks like about a 90 millimeter fan probably 100 millimeter based on the name of the product, and in a military style themed color sort of finish. So that's kind of interesting. So this will look great in your Vengeance C70 or uh, you know other kind of you know military themed sort of build. In, like if you're doing a themed build, then that could be a good thing. Otherwise you could get a different 100 millimeter fan. It's totally up to you. And there it is, the AXP100. We're almost gonna need like a phone size comparison for this. So for the sake of just being a troll, here's an HTC 8X size comparison again. So there's the thickness. So this is an extremely low profile cooler that once you go ahead and install that 100 millimeter fan on actually isn't much taller than a stock cooler. So check this out. Here's an LGA 1155 stock cooler. So it's about that tall. Here is the AXP100, which I can tell you just based on looking at it, how much metal is in there. I mean, look at this thing. We'll just destroy this stock cooler in terms of performance. It's a, not a very dense fin arrangement. So you can see here that they're quite loose, which is necessary when you have a slim low profile fan like this. This is a half, uh, I think this is probably what, like 15 mils thick? So it's not as thick as a standard 25 millimeter fan. So you're not able to generate as much pressure as easily. So you need to make sure that it's able to push air through the cooler itself, but it still packs six heat pipes. Check that out. Six heat pipes running off the base in a very tight bend up to this cooler, which is terminated with, oh, check that out. Nice little finishing touch. Little thermal right logos on the end of each one of the heat pipe caps. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, it feels incredibly solid, which I've come to expect again from thermal right coolers. And no way, what are these? Are these heat pipe? They couldn't be. No, those can't be heat pipes, they're too small. But uh, whatever, so there's two little clips here that sort of make it more, more rigid. So I wanna compare this to something like the uh, Fantex low profile cooler. So in terms of the actual profile of it, they're pretty similar. So I think we can all say out of a stock cooler, a competing solution, and the AXP100, which one makes the most sense for your sort of small form factor installation. Now I did a build in a Lian Lee PCQ08, I believe is the case. And I ended up using an older Silenex cooler of all things. I can tell you guys right now that I would definitely, if I could get the case open and actually access the CPU socket, because that's how tight it is, replace it with this in a second. Because what's great about a design like this is it's much broader, which is fine because as long as it's tall enough to get past the 
the RAM slots, or if it doesn't go into the no zone on the CPU design manufacture uh, on the CPU design guidelines, then it's big enough that as long as you have a power supply over top of it, you could probably actually passively cool your CPU. Although don't quote me on that, you might at least need like a, like a cardboard shroud. You can build one yourself. Um, that was something that I tried to do with the one that I had, but the CPU cooler is not good enough. So there you go. Uh, I'm going to do the obligatory finger shot on the bottom here. Thermalrite does such a good job of the, uh, the manufacturing on their pro I mean, look at this thing. Remember, guys, again, the obligatory finger shot does not necessarily indicate how flat the surface is or how well the cooler will perform, but it's just the kind of care and attention that goes into the products. In fact, if I angled this just right, you could probably catch Diesel in his camera over there. No, he's giving me, he's giving me the head shake. That either means it's not working or don't do it. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. Thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at the AXP100 from Thermalrite. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. And I'm just going to try and figure out why the heck they sent this fan, because this doesn't seem to have anything to do with the AXP100. But there you go. It's the TY141 fan from Thermalrite. It has been unboxed as well. It has a sleeved cable, and it is a 140 millimeter fan that has a 120 millimeter clearance on this side by the look of things and 140 millimeters on this side and uses 120 millimeter mounting holes and big broad blades for suppose looks like optimized pressure optimized fan don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings reviews and other computer videos